And now let me show you some recent headlines from Britain. Coal power stations fired up. Customers paid to cut energy use. UK faces worst and longest recession in G7. Prince Harry details physical attack by brother William in new book. Do you see what they're dealing with? A power crisis, a recession, an endless drama in the royal family. And yet, when their national broadcaster, the BBC, chooses to make a documentary, this is the subject they pick. India, the Modi question, that is the title. It talks about India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This documentary has triggered sharp reactions. I'm sure you've heard about it. Many of you asked us to take this up on Vantage, and here we are. Let's begin with an introduction of the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. It was launched in the year 1922 as a mouthpiece of Imperial Britain. It's a public service broadcaster. It runs on taxpayer money and it operates under a royal charter. The last few years have been tough for the BBC. There's a cash crunch, job cuts and a growing list of controversies. They lied to get an interview, that famous interview with Princess Diana, the one where she talked about a failed marriage to now King Charles. The BBC had to apologize for that interview, for deceiving Diana to get a scoop. And as we speak, the BBC chairman is being investigated. What for? Conflict of interest. Richard Sharp is the BBC chairman. He's said to have helped former Prime Minister Boris Johnson secure a loan, a loan worth $900,000. Sharp says there was no quid pro quo. And I won't get into the case. This was just to show you what an illustrious record they've had. Now to the documentary they've done. We haven't seen it and we don't plan to but it has made quite a splash. If the idea was to grab eyeballs and to trend, they have succeeded. But at what cost, we ask? The documentary purportedly talks about the 2002 Gujarat riots and implicates the Modi government. He was then Chief Minister of Gujarat, the state of Gujarat in 2002. This documentary is the BBC's opinion piece. And here are the facts. The Gujarat riots were investigated by a special investigation team or SIT appointed by the Supreme Court of India at a time when the Congress party was in power at the center. Mr. Modi was at the center of this probe. Like I said, he was the chief minister of Gujarat and he was given a clean chit. Let me rephrase that. A Supreme Court appointed team cleared Narendra Modi of all charges. This was in the year 2012, well before he became the Prime Minister of India. Last year, the Supreme Court scrutinized the report once again. A plea was filed, a three-judge bench heard the arguments, and again they gave a clean chit. The judges had a simple question to answer. Were the riots the result of a larger conspiracy? Allow me to quote what the judgment said. The special investigation team has not found any conspiracy. No material was discovered pointing towards any meeting of minds. The riots across the state had taken place spontaneously. India's highest court has said this. And I will not dwell on it anymore because none of this is news anymore. Only the BBC thinks it is. So they've dedicated a full show to it. And it has generated a response. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was asked about it. He said he disagrees with the characterization. Does the Prime Minister agree with his diplomats in the Foreign Office that Modi was directly responsible? I'm not sure I agree at all with the characterization that the Honourable Gentleman has put forward. The US State Department was asked about it. It says it hasn't even heard about the documentary. I'm not aware of this documentary that, that you point to, but I, what I will say broadly is that there are a number of elements that undergird the global strategic partnership that we have uh, with our Indian partners. Um, there are uh, close political ties, there are economic ties, there are exceptionally deep people-to-people -people ties uh, between the United States and India. Uh, but one of those additional elements are the values that we share. Well, what about India's response? New Delhi decided to ban the documentary. Now, we're not sure how effective a ban is in this day and age and how advisable it is in any age. But a better way, we say, to counter this propaganda will be to set the record straight and reclaim the narrative, which is what we hope to do through this show. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, Racism in 2023. We're waiting.